we hope all of you had a very happy Thanksgiving and enjoyed your turkey day, your weekend, and all of that good stuff. Hopefully you didn't go, oh my God, I ate too much. Oh my God, uh, if it fits my macros, fuck that. Holidays, enjoy yourselves. Burn the calories off afterwards. We got a fucking good one in store for you. The very lovely Chanel Renee joins us from the Olympia Expo along with a big game Paul James at the combo booth for Positively Evil and Money Cash Gains Apparel. Men and women's apparel. Look at that. And we also are going to be, uh, we'll see some stuff going on from the globe. MSM goes global. We like that. Uh, a lot of, uh, I have, uh, don't ask me, a lot of people in Europe for some reason watch these programs. I'm very thankful for it. Scotland, England, uh, you know, Germany, um, just Norway, Denmark. I, you know, it, it's, it, it baffles my fucking guinea mind. But I'm very, very happy to see that. And, um, you know, Sweden, things like that. What attracts, maybe it's because they're into shit porn. Maybe I talk about eating ass a lot. So possibly that might be the connection, the secret one. But we are going to be joined by Chanel and Paul in just a moment after this quick break. But of course, we're going to have more of the lingerie fighting championship. And a lot more in store for you with the host of hosts coming up after this quick break on MSTV. How you doing? My name is John Sikoris, and this is Sharice Sikoris, and we're the owners of Titan Medical Center. OldSchoolLion.com presents MSM's coverage of 2018 Olympia, including the Expo Positively Evil booth with Chanel, Renee, and big game Paul James. Guys, what's going on? Not much, man. Just doing it. Keeping super busy and nearly sold out of everything yesterday, so I'm hoping I saw the rest today. That is a good problem to have. So now this is the first time you guys actually had a booth for the company, right? Absolutely, and I'm hoping to have one at the Ohio, so we'll see how this goes and go from there. Well, the way you're making it sound, it seems like the decision's already been made. You have to just make plans now to do it. If you sold out here, you're going to sell out there. How's it been going with the company? I see you got Melanie over here. You got a lot of the five percenters doing stuff for you. How does it feel having some of the crew back together? Honestly, it's been amazing, and I'm so thankful that so many fans have followed through, and they've actually continued to be so supportive of me, and so many of the five percenters that were let go. They still were like, hey, we are always going to be family. I mean, like, that gives me chills, because that means so much that I still have that, like, loyalty and that love from them, and I have that for them as well. Um, and we actually started a company for Paul, so it's money, cash gains. Oh, yeah, that's so it, right there. Like yeah. Yep, got yeah. the hats. For the Ohio, we'll probably have both at the Ohio, so people will have even more options. He's more of that like rugged, hardcore, manly, like in your fucking it's, face. It's, it's really? the, du the douchebag look without the douchebaggery. You know what I mean? <laughs> Bringing the look without the without the past. Without the attitude. But uh, Rob D'Angelo was telling me yesterday that you guys were hanging out and. People were coming up taking pictures because there was a bunch of five percenters hanging out together. It's like, band back together, man. It, yeah, like the Blue fucking Blues Brothers. So yeah. you obviously know that there's a magic little thing there with that. And I think what you guys are doing together is fucking wonderful. What made you decide to stop, you know, getting like Melanie's over there, get some of the people back together? What made you decide that? That kind of just happened. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it just kind of fell into place. I was like, you know, I don't want to ask anybody for their help. I don't want to be like, please help me. I'm like, I'm going to have to be a big girl, but my big girl panties on it. Keep fucking going. So everybody else was like, no, we want to help you. You don't have to pay us or anything. We'll just, we want to help you. We love you so much. So they randomly have come over, help me organize, help me if I got to go to the bathroom, go get food, whatever. Yeah. They're like, whatever you need, we're there for you. So it just fell into place. And I was like, wow, like Rich really did do a great thing by picking people that he felt were like just good people. And they've stayed loyal like through all of that. And, and we support each other so much. So that means more to me than anything. I think that's really cool. And my favorite, and you, you think you posted it again the other day. If somebody doesn't like it, you know what I'm going to say. I, I, that, fucking five stars. Tell the haters, if they don't like what's going on here, what, what could they do? Suck my dick. <laughs> Positively evil, E-V-O-L dot com and gains, money, cash, gains dot com. Big game, Paul James, Chanel Renee here at the Olympia Expo.
BigBlueLion.com presents MSM's coverage of the 2018 Olympia. We are here with Champs Champ. But what's your, what's your real name, unless you got to be incognito? No, Aaron. Aaron. All right, he's a MSM family member. He's on the lives all the time. We met last year at Super League yep, at really. Jay Jung's uh, City Athletic Club. And you got your One Day You May shirt on, so yep. for Rich Piana. What's going on with you for the Olympic this year? Have you been hanging out here all weekend? Yeah, uh, actually not yesterday to here today. Got here right when it opened, and I'm gonna be here all day probably. We are too. We haven't got in the door yet, and I'm I'm, I'm fucking hate crowds, so I'm trying to delay it. So it's good we got some footage before we go in there. So what uh, what's been your, your take at the expo? You know, what, I mean, you've been at these things before. How do you compare this to other ones? To be honest, to me it looks like it's, it's a little uh, not as many vendors in there as. Yeah before but uh it seems like a good crowd turned up but besides that yeah it's good we got a lot of family members here so aaron here at the olympia expo
Open up, girls. It's Coach. <laughs> Open the door. I can hear you. Hi. Hi. How you guys doing? I was coming. Jesus, <laughs> look at your hair. So what's up? How you guys doing tonight? Uh, Why are you here? I was coming to check on you guys. You had a big fight tomorrow? Yeah. I want to make sure you guys are going to get some good rest and some good sex for the match. Oh, Joel came to check on me the night before the fight and told me that I should um, indulge in some sexual activities because it would be better for the fight. I would do better in the fight. No, it has to be men because you need to... <laughs> <laughs> what do we need to... What is this? You need to get the testosterone. Okay, originally I was of the school that sex before a fight is a bad thing. But I was told by someone not involved in MMA that sex before a fight is a good thing. His idea about sex before fights being good for you is the worst advice I've ever heard in my life. I think that it would tire you out, so I don't know if that's a great idea. Um, you know. But anyways, take my advice, <clears throat> have a good night. If you guys go out and nothing happens, just remember I'm one floor down. I think Joel is a funny coach, and I'm just so thankful that he's not my coach. Have a good night, coach. Have a good Bye. night, guys. Bye. Wouldn't it be great if you could have a cheat meal without having a cheat meal? Well, now you can. The guys over at Master Dash Rice have come up with these Rise Buddy snacks. Zero grams trans fat, made with brown rice, gluten-free, baked, not fried. This is, it's like putting your hand into a big bag of crap potato chips, but coming out with something that tastes better and is good for you. My favorite is the pizza for obvious reasons. Check out Rise Buddy over at master-rice.com. No, I've been a little MIA, but I've been sick. So, but I just wanted to show you guys what I just got in the mail today from this awesome company, um, Rise Buddy. So I'm on sports, uh, Muscle Sports Mag. The nose knows that Rise Buddy snacks kick ass. Let me tell you something. The guys over at master-rice.com have figured it out. And us in the bodybuilding and fitness industry, take notice. It's like a cheat meal, cheat snack, but it's not. This is a great product right here. Made with brown rice, gluten-free, trans, no trans fat, all of that good stuff. Tastes like a bag of chips, but it doesn't give you the gut like a bag of chips. Hey, um, I wish I had these when I was recovering from my back surgery over the summer. Unfortunately, um, I hooked up with these dudes after that. But I was on the couch for a month. Here's basically the long and short of the nose nose this episode. If you need to get back surgery, expect it to really suck for the first couple of weeks. Maybe even the first month. But after that, if you're like I was with my recovery, I feel like a champ. I feel like I never had a back injury. Let me tell you, July 27th, I had a um, L4 and L5 spinal fusion. They put screws in my back, you know. I had bulging discs and herniated discs and all screwed up. I had, uh, 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 what's that thing called? That uh, Spinal stenosis, like David Wright. Uh, from the New York Metropolitan Baseball Club. Um, so I was in a lot of pain for many, I'd say a good 15 years, and it got worse and worse and worse, and it got to the point where I couldn't take it anymore. So I basically gave in, um, went to, the, uh, went to a, uh, a spine specialist, an orthopedic, and he looked at the MRI and the x-rays and all of that stuff, and he said, you got to do it. It's either that or you're going to live in pain. So I did it. The first couple of weeks were tough, man. And I'm, I'm going to show some pictures over here of, uh, uh, of when I was recovering and stuff and, and the x-ray with the screws in it. And I really, and it was like, I had a lot of pain, the nerves like in my legs. I was getting the shooting pain. And, and it was one day when I was like, it started to feel great after like three days. And I was off the painkillers and everything. 
and I, I hate, I got off the painkillers. I had the surgery on a Friday. At noon Saturday, was I said, I don't want, that's my last painkiller. I felt great in the hospital. But I went home on Monday, and I felt like shit. So when I got home, I kind of, I said, I got no choice. I went back on the painkillers. I did that for a couple of weeks, and then I came off of them. I weaned myself off. I was on the extra strength Tylenol only. Um, and then there was one day where it just, it was, my leg was killing me, my left leg for some reason, because the nerves that are in there, it's like they get inflamed because they got to move the nerves while they fuse and then they put the nerves back and all of that. So they take a beating back there and it takes a while for them, the, the swelling and all of that stuff to go down. And I was like, oh my God, I thought I was, you know, I thought I was out of the woods kind of thing. And I was like, Fuck, I wish I didn't do this. That one day I said, I wish I didn't do this surgery. It was just frustration on that part. So um, I took the painkiller that one more day. This is probably like two to three weeks after the surgery. And then after that, smooth sailing, my friends. I started going to physical therapy probably around week three or four, around that same time. Very light. We were doing a lot of uh, very light exercises, strengthening my core, strengthening my legs. My left leg and left foot, left ankle are still a little weaker, uh, but I have bands. I have one at home and one in the office here, and I, I, I do workouts with them because I, I stopped going to therapy after a couple of months. I said, I think I'm good, but I just you know do the workout at home, and don't be stupid in the gym. Guys, if you're going to get back fusion surgery and you want to start squatting and deadlifting again, that's on you, bro. I mean, I have nothing to prove. and I never proved anything before anyway. So I was like, you know, don't go crazy squatting. And I just started laughing at therapists. I'm like, I haven't squatted in two years anyway because of the back pain. So I could care less about that stuff. I'm way the ego weight is left <laughs> maybe in my 30s, <laughs> 51. So. Be smart. If you do get a surgery like that, expect the first couple of weeks to be rough. You get through them. And then what you need to do is you got to follow what they tell you at physical therapy. I know a lot of people that go to the gym a lot go, ah, therapy is bullshit. You know what? No, because I learned a certain exercise that I still do to this day with an iso ball for the core um, that I, I do because – the, you know, the guy doesn't want me doing like sit up type of mo movements and crunches and things like that for obvious reasons. So what I do is I get one of those big ISO balls. I, you know, in the, in the therapy place, it was a table. I use this ab machine in my gym, oddly enough, and I put it because it's the right height and you hold like this 25 seconds. What I try to do is I tighten my abs and I try to make a vacuum and I go like that and then I switch hands 25 seconds. I do five rounds of that 25 and 25 and um, I, I really, you know, feel it in, in my core and my abs. And then obviously in your lower back, you want to strengthen as well. So I told the therapist, I said, that exercise is great. And there's another one you could do for your obliques because they didn't want me twisting. So what I do is I get the iso ball. I put one end against a wall. And then I get my hands and I do one of these. And I push the ball on the other side against the wall. About maybe eye level. And I hold it the same thing, 25, and then I switch sides, and I do it to 25. I'm telling you, you feel it in your obliques. You can do these stupid dumbbell things forever, and Valentino has his theory that that's what makes you look blocky, and I agree with him on that. But if you're just doing uh, like isometrics um, with, this, with the ball, you're not going to get that blocky look. If anything, you're going to just maybe hopefully lean out. You know, that's, that's what I'm hoping, that I'm tightening my core and maybe leaning it out a little bit. But it's more for regaining strength in an area that got its ass kicked in from the surgery. So my back workout is very, very uh, limited. I can only do certain things. Shoulders, same thing. You know, I, I got to make sure I don't put – I got to be – really seated good to do presses and things like that and none of this arching your back uh bench press he told me to put and i never was one to put my feet on the bench i thought it was stupid to do that or legs up but the reason why i do that now is because you're not arching your lower back when you're doing your bench press and i'm going light i mean i'm going light <laughs> like my warm-up sets my my regular sets now so i've learned to adapt with this back injury and, and subsequent convalescence from the surgery and getting back in the gym slowly. So don't be in a rush when you get back in the gym, do some cardio. Like I do a lot of seated cardio now. 
So my, I'm not standing for a half hour or 45 minutes on an elliptical. I'm seated on that, that seated bike thing. And as long as it's got a back support, uh, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing it to burn calories and, and cut some fat. I'm not trying to enter a contest, you know. So uh, at this stage of my life, I needed the back surgery. I got the back surgery, and I'm being smart, and that's why my recovery is going well. I'm not doing things that I'm not supposed to do. I'm not overdoing it. Yeah, I'm using 25-pound dumbbells to do curls. So what? You want to do 40s and swing and arch your back and twist and turn? It's going to fuck your back up. And trust me, I, I fucked my back up over years and years and years of doing not just working out but just living life. Um, I, uh, in my previous employments, I stood for hours and hours on end, sometimes wearing, you know, like dress a suit and dress shoes and shit. So that, that wears on you after a while. So um, the nose knows if you need to get back surgery. Be careful. Make sure you get it at the right guy. If anybody that lives in the Long Island, New York area, I got my surgery at Hospital uh, for Special Surgery in Midtown Manhattan. It's the best place to get a surgery like this. The doctor has two offices, one in Midtown, one on Long Island. Anybody that lives in this area, I mean, people come in and fly in to get surgery at that hospital from other states. Send me an email, joe at musclesportmag.com, or DM me on Instagram at musclesportmag. I'll give you this guy's info, Dr. Charles Goodwin. The fucking guy is a, a, a fucking champ when it comes to fixing one's back. And I could speak from personal experience. And I have two friends, Kephas being one of them, who had neck surgery by this guy. And our other friend in the gym, Joe Railroad, he had the same surgery I did. So hopefully you don't have back surgery because you don't have a back injury. But if you do, it's not the end of the world. Just be smart and your recovery.
Hey guys, Steve here. Welcome to my world. I finally, for God's <laughs> sakes, some of the most important people that organize this. I'm here with Phil Mortimer. How are you doing, Phil? Yeah, good. How yeah, you? I'm pretty good. Yeah, we. Um, this is a humongous task, guys. Uh, myself, I've been to the Olympia. Uh, I've been to the Arnolds. They, it, they pale in comparison, don't you think, to body power? Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I, I'm slightly biased, but yeah. Well, the sheer amount of people. So this is the 10th anniversary. 10th anniversary. Yeah, um, and what's the theme? Uh, Vegas. <laughs> now, have now, seen? now, I have seen, I actually have seen, but for the Muscle Sports Bank fans, yeah. we were in Vegas, and now there's no, there's, in Vegas you expect pawn shops, hookers, booze, and gambling. Do we have any of that? Mm. Depends which area of the hall you go. <laughs> Not that I've seen, but <laughs> close to Vegas as possible. We wanted to do something big for our 10 year anniversary. Yeah, so. um, it, yeah, and it, it, guys, honestly, it is phenomenal. These guys work year round, don't you, basically? As soon as this one's finished. Yeah, we'll be back in the office on Monday uh, planning for, planning well, we've already started planning for next year, actually, but. Um, right, well, yeah, I was actually like told by um, someone that this is the last body power in this format. Can yeah. you explain why, please? Yeah, I mean, well, the, the show has grown, as I say, this is 10 years in. Yeah. Um, it's grown to a huge amount. Last year we had 96,000 people here. Yeah. This year's no doubt going to be more than that. I think it's um, a lot more than that, actually. Yeah. From the crowds. I'd say so. Um, um, as you know, I've been at the 5% booth for so long, I've actually never seen any of this. It's, it's yeah, quite interesting. It's to travel and walk around. Um, yeah. But uh, we need to keep the show fresh and keep it different and something new, um, as we've done year on year. But um, we want to give both visitors and exhibitors um, a different sort of experience really, yeah. uh, and evolve the show more so. So next year, it's going to be known as the Body Power Experience. Ooh. Right, can you explain that a bit? Yeah, so um, it'll be laid out completely different. So you'll come into the main entrance hall yep. and we'll have a huge uh, atrium there, yeah. um, which will have some smoothie bars. It'll all be open plan, some yeah. cafe and smoothie bars in the middle, some uh, wicked features uh, that brands will be taking around the outside of this, this first hall, about 10,000 yeah. square meters size. Yeah, this guys, you gotta you got to imagine, I'll, I'll do a spin after this interview, the sheer size of this place, it, it's just fucking mind blowing. All right, now, how has body power changed from the first one to this one? Because body power, the first, it was a bit more, at the very first one, there was no social media per se, no, was there? No, not at all. Right? You had to be famous from the magazines. Yeah. And, uh, you know, be a big, you had to be a huge enthusiast of the sport. Yeah, you, you die hard fan. Yeah, and now it's more, uh, for me, uh, you can actually say whatever you want on here, all right? All right, <laughs> no, it's right, more right. the internet stars, it's yeah. more Instagram fame. Um, there's very, very little hardcore bodybuilding. Yes, yes and no. When the show started off, it yeah. was all about uh, bodybuilding, strongman powerlifting, yeah. and power sports mainly, and that's how it needed to be to, to launch a show. No, no one had, no one had brought all of these um, types of sports together to do an expo. No, before. nobody has. Um, which so. now there's shows all over the place trying to do the same thing. So it yeah. started off on that. Um, as the years have gone on, the demographic has changed slightly. Sure. So um, we still actually have a huge bodybuilding element to the expo. Oh, yeah, it's um, fantastic. But it's the just strong a, for me, and I've always said this, and it's going to go on, that the, to watch a strongman yeah. competition, um, these guys know that as well, that <laughs> I, I'm a huge fan of it. Yeah. Um, I just like um, Lawrence Charlet, I interviewed him, I love Lawrence, Terry Hollins. What we're trying to get is, in the UK, for Muscle Sports Bank is get homegrown British talent. Yeah. Yeah, the UK. Because every, everybody from the fucking States in Muscle Sports Bank, have, they've all seen, you know, they've seen the Phil Heaths. They, he's interviewed all them. We want the good homegrown. Up and coming. Yeah, yeah. up and coming British talent that could possibly maybe, you know, win a trophy. Like Terry Hollins. He, he looks phenomenal now. And I really, really, I hope he work, wins the World's Strongest Man. That's for an example. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Terry, you know, yeah. for a lot of the Americans, they don't know who Ryan Terry is. Yeah, which is great. I mean, we've worked you know, with Ryan for 10 years. 10 years now, yeah. Alongside USN. Now, uh, Ryan, yeah. I'm trying to get a goddamn interview with you, bye. All right? <laughs> I saw you at the Olympia. I saw you win. I'll try to get an interview with you. All right? Um, like the Aaron Lambos. Yeah. Lee Priest is 
He's nuts. We all know Lee Priest is crazy oh, in the yeah. box of frogs. Well, they, they've got a huge queue. They've got a huge queue. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so as a wrap-up, what would you like to say to the people out in uh, the United States? Uh, well, from our side, yeah, keep an eye out on what's happening for next year. Say it's going to be more of an experience. So we'll have a, a shopping village, which will be Body Power Central. We'll have a huge competition hall. Uh, we're introducing more of a, a lifestyle section to the show, a performance section to the show. Yeah. We still have a huge aesthetic section as we currently do, yeah. um, but it's going to be completely different for next year. Um, yeah, make sure you come across. Yeah, guys, if you ever want to get a chance, come across. Speak to Phil. I finally got a hold of this handsome motherfucker. <laughs> it only took two days. You have, it only took two fucking days. Um, have a great day, and on three, say peace. One, two, three. Peace. That's going to do it for us on this week's episode of MSTV. Thank you, of course, to Chanel and Paul for joining us from their friendly booth and we hopefully will see more of them since we're going to be doing a lot of expos i was been teasing that a lot on the uh live instagram live shows but make sure you check us out here every tuesday for our flagship variety program where the host of hosts bring you all of their assets so be sure to hit that subscribe button subscribe to youtube it costs fucking nothing guys you got nothing to lose, nothing to spend, everything to gain. And we will see you in one week. Take care.